Hey and welcome to Hidden Characters, where we dive into the journeys of great people behind great games. Today, we're going to examine the journey of Sean Young, the solo creator of Littlewood, and what it took for him to take an idea, inspiration, and an abundance of enthusiastic hard work to make his dreams come true. So Sean Young's story begins in 2011 in Orlando, Florida, where he entered the University of Central Florida with virtually no experience in game design, but had lots of ideas swimming inside of his ambitious head. Sean majored in computer science and got his start into learning and developing Android games as a hobby through an intro to C programming school course. Early on during his college learnings, he made some great friends and connections with people who had the same kind of passion as him in different forms like music, art, and development. These relationships became a crucial part of his journey during and after college, as I'm sure it not only kept him motivated, but also provided great opportunities for partnerships, as we will discuss a little bit later on. Even at an early start in his freshman year there, he worked hard to develop and hone his craft. He also didn't limit his learnings to just what was taught in school. He ventured off on his own personal time to learn coding skills, pixel art, and writing. He watched countless hours on YouTube, which became an essential source of progress in his skills, and soon to be his only source. Sean put his learnings to action right away as he started making and releasing games for Android before getting a Mac and learning to make iOS games as well. Now you may be thinking that he made maybe a game or two for mobile to start things out, but no. He went all out, especially in the first year of college as he made and released about seven games within the first year of school. The most interesting part for me is not necessarily the fact that he released so many games in such a short period of time, but the fact that most of these games would be considered flops from a popularity and financial standpoint. And yet, he didn't allow this to change his passion for game design. In fact, this only motivated him more and caused his passion to grow as he took learnings from each game and used it to make the next idea even better. Eventually, he would have big success with one of his titles, that being Pixel Kingdom, which had a very successful Kickstarter and released in 2013 on iOS and had over a million downloads. He would follow this up with dev updates and bug fixes, but this was still the very beginning for him as he had yet another project he was working on that would garner a lot of popularity and great success. Sean made the decision to take a semester off so that he could dedicate more of his time on his next game, Magisite. He worked on it as often as he possibly could, working upwards of 8 hours per day. He also spent a significant amount of time building his fan base. In an interview, Sean said, Once the main features were set, I started practicing my pixel art in order to find the correct art direction for Magisite before sharing my vision on indie gaming sites. Soon after I had a solid demo and polished visuals, I launched a Kickstarter and Steam Greenlight campaign, which only helped the development process by motivating me with words from all of the supporters and fans. This Kickstarter campaign would end up being an overwhelming success as it brought in 16 times what he was asking for with over $16,000. The support of the backers was surprising and significant enough for him to make a pretty big decision. It wasn't until I made my first PC game, Magisite, that I realized that being a game developer could be my lifelong career. Once Magisite's Kickstarter was a success, I dropped out of college to fully commit myself to making games. I haven't looked back since. During his time away from his schooling, he started his own developing and publishing studio in 2014 called Smash Games with Sean as the sole operator. Later that year, Magisite would release as the first major title under the publishing name, followed by Roguelands, both titles that garnered a lot of attention and great success, increasing his fan base. After Magisite, Sean set his eyes on one of his next projects, of which there were many, when one of his friends recommended that he play a new game that had just come out, a game that would completely change the way he viewed video game design. 
My friend convinced me to try Animal Crossing, so I tried New Leaf on the 3DS. I quickly found that I was addicted. I was having a blast hanging out with my animal friends and doing odd chores around town. This really perplexed me because how could players have fun picking leaves and doing things that we might find boring in real life? This has such a profound effect on my views of game design that I had to try to make a game that could capture such a charming and relaxing world. That's when Littlewood was born. With new inspiration and direction, Sean got started putting his previous learnings and skills to use. For Littlewood, he had many different approaches to the look and feel of the game. And judging from the early photos and tweets, it appeared to be on track to be a side-scrolling game. Which is very interesting considering the nature of the final product, but kind of makes sense for him as the majority of the games he had worked on were side-scrollers. So he probably tried to work within what he knew, at least initially. So he quickly scrapped that idea and went on to learn a program called Tiled, which helped him to bring to life a top-down version of what he had in mind. The pixel art itself wasn't something he had to worry about too much, as he already had a great amount of experience with previous titles. Dialogue and friendship building are some of the key components of Animal Crossing's game design, and Sean wanted to provide a great way to connect with the people and creatures of Littlewood. But this would prove to be the hardest part of his development process. In an interview, Sean explained, Writing dialogue was actually the toughest part for me. To prevent writer's block, I began reading more and also watching Let's Plays of RPGs on YouTube. So day in and day out, he would spend hours working on and refining his title for a year and a half, while also promoting his project by reaching out to YouTubers, Twitch streamers, and of course posting on Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. He was finally ready to launch a Kickstarter campaign on January 15, 2019. I've mentioned Kickstarter before with Magisite, which was met with great success, but what many people may not know or understand is that starting and maintaining a Kickstarter campaign is not as easy as it seems. It's not like you just set up a page and watch the funds come to you. You actually have to be in the trenches, talking to and responding to your backers, and giving them consistent and constant updates on your progress and ensuring that you are delivering on the promises of the campaign, including all of the extras. As for Littlewood's campaign, it was clear that funding was not going to be an issue with the immense amount of support. The campaign's asking amount wasn't too much, but it was funded within two hours and would end with over $82,000 from 3,952 backers. Filled with excitement and gratitude from his Kickstarter success, he looked forward to going to the upcoming PAX East in March of 2019. He got to showcase his work, receive feedback, and meet many fans of his that waited eagerly to get their hands on the game early and for it to release. It turned out to be a great time for not only him, but his friends and fellow game makers who he worked closely with under Smash Games. After PAX East, it was time to get back to working hard to get the game prepared for its Steam Early Access release, which would drop on June 18, 2019. I'm sure this was a huge milestone for him as he had made it to a point where he could release an early, yet stable and playable version of his game. This helped him garner more attention as well as receive valuable feedback before polishing up the game for a final release. August 4th, 2020 marked a very happy and emotional day, as Sean Young got to see his biggest project and dream come to fruition with the release of Littlewood on PC. All of his hard work and sacrifices worked out. From the massive Kickstarter's triumph, to the showcase at PAX East, the early access release, and all the way through to the final game release. I'm sure 2020 ended up being the best year of Sean's life. Not only for the release of his game, but because during the later part of this journey, Sean and his wife became first-time parents earlier in the year. I know 2020 had all kinds of downturns for many of us, but for Sean, he had all of the motivation, drive, and support to see it all through. 
Sean was in the home stretch now with two major goals left. To release the game on the Switch and to fulfill all of the extras for his Kickstarter backers. Getting access on the Switch took a few months, but as soon as he got the okay from Nintendo, he was able to release it on February 25th of this year while also working to deliver on all of the Kickstarter promises. Sean did share some advice from his experience making games and going through many if not all of the challenges that other game developers go through. If you are a game developer just starting out, please don't wait. Start making games right now. I went to college for computer science for two years before dropping out and learning everything that I needed to know with YouTube tutorials. Anyone can make a game, it just requires hard work and diligence. It is better to start a project and complete it than to start 100 projects and finish none of them. So as for what Sean is up to these days, after finishing the development and updates for Littlewood, he's going right back to Littlewood, but with a sequel slash spinoff of sorts. You see, Sean, like myself and many of you, is a massive fan of Pokemon and Pokemon style gameplay. With that being said, he is in a process of creating a heavily Pokemon inspired Littlewood sequel that focuses on capturing and raising monsters to battle as a team, just like in Pokemon Emerald, which is his favorite in the series. It seems to feature some interesting and key differences, like the ability to um, romance gym leaders, which is already blowing open some doors as far as possibilities for this game in its early development. And as excited as many of you probably are at the thought of this game, it will likely take a bit more time for him to develop this. As I mentioned, him and his wife became uh, new parents just last year. And he's already expressed that uh, he isn't interested in creating this uh, next massive game just yet. And that makes perfect sense as he's putting uh, father duties before anything else. If you would like to keep up with the development of this game, I highly recommend that you head on over to his Twitter page as he posts pretty regularly with his progress. Alright, that's going to be it for me. I really did enjoy learning about Sean's journey and taking some great lessons. Uh, but if you did as well, go ahead and subscribe and like the video if you did like it. Um, but I look forward to seeing you all on the next one as we hunt down some more hidden characters. Take care.